Hello and welcome to today's video. So on our workbench today we have the Evnetics Soliton 1 and as you can see I have uh, taken it apart. <laughs> Trying to get down to the uh, gate driver board but um, go over a few of the parts here. We've got these giant probably eighth inch thick solid copper probably weighs four or five pounds positive and negative bus bars. We've got uh, oh um I think in the last video I said it was a four quadrant controller because it had the, um, I was thinking it had an H bridge. It doesn't. It's actually a two quadrant controller. So we got both the um, IGBTs here in parallel. You can see that by the, this goes out to the motor. This is ground. That goes out to the motor. This post attaches to um, one of those giant, that giant copper bus bar there. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, this wouldn't be a four quadrant controller. This is just a two quadrant. So we have uh, acceleration and regenerative braking, and that's it. There's um, no reverse. So yeah, they're just operating in parallel. Next, we've got a ginormous 600 volt capacitor. I, can't, I don't know how many microfarads it is because the uh, label is down here, and I can just read that it says 600 volts. <laughs> but it's huge. Um, I do have. Uh, you'll see. I've got. Um, they're all in. Par or they're all in parallel. Here, I can show you that. Uh, I have the. Um, since it is <laughs> such a giant electrolytic capacitor, I've got the. Uh, you can see I've got a piece of solder shorting it out. But yeah, they're all in. Like the inner ring and the outer ring, they're all in parallel. Um, yeah, so I, I put that on there just because uh, large electrolytics like this can build up a charge on them on their own, uh, just the way the um, electrolyte stores charge. And then you, if you accidentally come across here, it could zap you. So <laughs> safety first. Uh, I also did that to the um, emitter gate pins on the IGBTs just because uh, they're only good to 20 volts and it doesn't take much, a little tiny bit of static and you can uh, you can kill the IGBT very easily. So the gate driver board has a resistor on there to keep that from happening. But um, once they're in circuit, they're okay. But when they're floating around like this, they can build up a charge and you can kill them. So that's how you do that. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, so we were wondering if this was machined out of a solid, well, I don't know. I was wondering if it was machined out of a solid chunk of aluminum. It's not, it's cast. So you can see the uh, casting, aluminum casting here. And then they came back and, and machined it, milled the... Uh, the surface is flat, mount everything in there. Um, yeah, speaking of, it's kind of interesting. There's, I have, I don't think it has any mounting. I like, uh, there are mount holes here for this big capacitor and they're drilled and tapped, but it doesn't look like there's everything, any, or there doesn't look like there's ever been a, um, a bolt in there. Uh, it's just siliconed in, so you can actually, you can see, it, you can move it around. Um, that might be just to get everything lined up, just tolerant stack up wasn't, you know, good enough, so they couldn't bolt it in. They found that that did damage. I don't know. Uh, same with um, the contactors there. You can see they have holes that are drilled and tapped for them, and then when this was torqued, it kind of moved it. But uh, I have to ask the customer if there's ever... It doesn't look like, just looking at the, um, the mounting holes, it doesn't look like there's ever been a bolt on it or anything. So I think that's that way for a reason. Probably thermal expansion or whatnot. Um, the only other interesting thing is that means that the contactors are floating. They're just held by their two terminals here to this binding post. But that means that this plate is just held in by those two posts since this is floating um, and bolted to the IGBT, which is bolted down. So the IGBTs themselves and the contactors are holding that plate. Seems odd, but that's how they did it. <laughs> um, yeah, what else? Um, oh, I think in the last video I mentioned that this was the uh, uh, temperature probe. It's actually the fan. You can see that goes to those two posts, which go through to the fans. The temperature probe is here. It plugs into the bottom of the um, uh, IGBT driver board. And... Um, yeah, so I think that's everything going on there. Oh, I yeah, I got one other interesting beef about the mounting here. Um, so this is the gate driver board, and it, it's it got little 
spade connectors there that plug into the IGBTs. Like, you know, it just kind of drops in here. I'm not going to push it in, but what's interesting is that it just has a bolt that goes through the uh, PCB to hold the motor uh, output bus bar to the IGBT. And that's, I don't know, I, I don't like it <laughs> because the, the fiberglass of the PCB is being compressed when you torque this down to hold, you know, this has kind of got some play to it. But to torque that down, you're compressing the fiberglass of your circuit board. And over time, that's, it's not like solid. It, it will, it will um, kind of squish on you over time. If you ever taken an old PCB out of a out of a, out of an old motor controller, where the mount um, screws are, you can see that it leaves indentions in the PCB, which means that the torque on this will lessen over time. So I don't know, that's not necessarily good, but I guess how it was made. Um, the way to, that you usually do it, um, other than just you know having a ring terminal or something that's not compressible going off to something else is uh, if you do want to put a board on top of something that has to hold torque is you use a large flanged um, bolt. You put that in, torque it down, and inside the middle of that bolt uh, on, in the head you drill and tap it as well, and then your PCB sits on top, and then you tighten that down, and that's not torque nearly as much to hold the... You know, you're not using any... Uh, clamping force through the PCB to hold your bus bar to an IGBT. But anyways, uh, don't get into that. But um, yeah, other than that, it's big, heavy, looks really cool. I mean, that capacitor looks looks pretty neat. <laughs> I've never seen that style before. It's huge. It's pretty much designed around that capacitor. Like that sits the width and everything. It's interesting. I don't know how much smaller you could have made this. You know, squish that together and just put a whole bunch of smaller caps in there, but I don't know. You yeah, probably could have made it what, uh, short, uh, narrower. But anyways, um, the whole point of taking it apart was to get down to the IGBT driver here. And <clears throat> so, yeah, okay, I got one more beef with this. So this is the snubber capacitor. These two caps are the snubbers. And these are the resistors. Uh, look at that. They're, f what is that, 4.7 ohms? Yeah, I think it's 4.7 ohms. Uh, so you got roughly 10 ohms of resistance through this to this cap to snub the high DVDT spikes that IGBTs generate when they switch. And interestingly, it's on one side. There's not, I would expect it to at least have a copy over here. That means that the loop current from the DVDT spike from this guy has to travel through that bus bar to get to the other side to get snubbed and then back again. So, ah, oh, I don't know. It's just, it's good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, to me, that seems odd. Uh, also, this thing looks, this snubber cap is so small. Like, normally they're huge. Um, uh, let's see, I don't have any... I don't have any examples right now. I can show you what like they're normally like really big snubber caps uh, with uh, tabs. They just literally bolt. I mean, they make them to literally come off and sit down like right next to it, just bolt in like right across. Well, I guess it wouldn't be over here. It'd be across there. They would just bolt right in. But anyways, <laughs> uh, yes. Anyways. Um, so, let me show you what's actually wrong with this board. So, uh, so, the customer was still getting a saturation error. I'm going to put you on the tripod because then I can actually probe stuff. So, um, these are all the gate drivers down here. There's four of them. Let me move that. You can see it, the whole thing. So, there's four of them. Uh, you can see that's the one, two, and then three and four. So the first thing I did is, uh, once I got the board out, is my quick check was to see if, if any of these uh, these guys are shorted. So I check in the first one here, 
We're just going to go right out across here and we get, well, you can't see it, but we get the diode drop of, of uh, this diode here. And we'll check the, uh, the next one. We're going to get the same diode drop across him. So we know these guys are good. We come over here. Let's get this better on camera. And we're going to check this guy. And it's dead. We're going to check his buddy. I gotta flip these around because they're backwards. And we get our diode drop. So the diode drop that we're measuring is this guy right here, which <laughs> it's kind of another nitpicky thing. So this is the gate driver, is this uh, chip right here. And it goes through about, uh, this is three, about five ohms or so to turn on the gate. And then this diode, when, when you turn this off, helps turn it off quicker. So you're going through the resistors to turn on, and then this guy will immediately try to turn, the, turn it off when you tell it to go off. So it doesn't have to go through the resistors. So this makes a faster turn off and a slower turn on. You want that if you're PWMing them because you don't want them ever to turn on at the same time. So you want this guy to essentially builds in a turn on delay versus your turn off delay. But you know, one of the things I don't like is the fact that uh, this guy is really close. But then the one for this guy is like way over here. And it's even, so yeah, it's loop current would have to go through here, go across into that via into the plane and then come back that way through the plane layer so versus this guy which is like right there i mean ideally you would take that resistor or that diode and put it like right here so it made all identical paths but i'm sure somebody did some analysis on that and found out it was okay and everything's fine <laughs> but <laughs> anyways the problem with this board i should just stop nitpicking on it uh problem with this board is that we've definitely got a short in it's either this diode which is bad um, which I don't suspect uh, I definitely suspect that it's probably the gate driver and uh, just have to uh, take them out check them see if it's extra short if it is we can just buy a new one but then we also need to kind of figure out what caused it to fail it could be that the, the IGBT just died on its own I mean it happens um, <clears throat> had something go wrong with it, it died, but when an IGBT dies, uh, we were looking at that one, and remember I had measured and had some weird stuff with the gates on, on, on these ones, on the ones that were removed. I don't know which one came from where, but uh, it's possible, well, it's highly likely that the gate drivers got exposed to high voltage, and uh, that pops them pretty quick. So, just need to uh, to do a little, take them out. If if we take that guy out and it's still shorted, then it's the diode. If I mean, it's actually probably easier to take the diode out, but I don't think it'll be the diode. I'm pretty sure it'll be the gate driver. Um, but yeah, we'll take them out, take a look at it. But uh, that's what that's why we're getting a saturation error. Um, the saturation detect circuit's actually up. Uh, it's actually part of these guys. Uh, you can kind of see they've conveniently labeled everything for me. So you've got this fault line. And if you trace that all the way around, it comes over here to this fault right here, which goes through. Um, it's either an op amp or a comparator. You see a little regen there. Uh, this is the one the customer replaced. I want to go in there and, and tidy up their soldering. I mean, that one looks pretty good because that's original. <laughs> this one's. Uh, I might go and fix that. Tidy up the uh, parts that were replaced. Also replaced these opto. He also replaced these opto isolators, and I think this guy too. Um, so yeah, uh, this is what's generating that fault. Like if you follow that, it goes over to the um, saturation error line, which then goes out through the connector. So we're in the right area, but it's probably not this section uh, that's actually having the problem. It's probably working perfectly fine saying, yeah, we're saturated because this IGBT never turns on. So you'd have a large, it'd be measuring a large voltage across. Well, this section would be measuring a large voltage across the isolator. So the, this section in through here, this diode is going to be the saturation detect circuit. And there should be, 
an identical one on the other side and it appears to be so this looks like it's the other half of it, it goes underneath here which <laughs> violates the uh, isolation <laughs> separation but yeah you can see this diode coming through here and then it's going to be these guys through here that generate a signal which then gets sent back over to here which then go on another layer over around underneath over to here and then get processed and make it back but anyways it's um yeah <laughs> i should stop nitpicking on this board but we're gonna fix it uh i suspect we just have a gate driver that's bad over here and that's why it's getting saturation errors because this guy's never turning on but um yeah anyways the video is really long thanks for watching